Hello, welcome to part two of my Gunter's Rule exploration as we learn together how to use the amazing Gunter's Rule from, well, originally from the 1600s. This model is from the late 1700s, is the best I can date it. Um, we're going to learn how to do all kinds of interesting things and we're following uh, Gunter's original book from 1634. I need to check, yeah, 1634. Well, not the original book because that cost seven and a half thousand pounds, but we should be using an online version and I'll put a link below so that you too can use a Gunter's Rule or use a facsimile thereof. So we'll be using this. We'll also be uh, using my 1700s dividers or compasses as they called them back then. Uh, we'll be using those as well. And for the really big calculations, another one that I managed to pick up at an antiques fair to do the full length of the 24 inches of the Gunter's Rule itself. So let's dive in and do some maths. Here's the book, all 600 pages of it. The description and use of the sector, cross staff and other instruments. On the left there you can see someone using a sector, which is another fantastic instrument I'd like to get hold of one day. Not that hard to get hold of those. On the right you've got the cross staff, used for astronomical and navigational purposes. And there is the rule with the compasses. So the chapter we're interested in at the moment is chapter 6, the use of the line of numbers, which is the log scale, which is the precursor to the slide rule. The first section there just describes what the rule is. We're looking for the num, it's got num by the side of the scale for numbers. And it's basically a log scale, in fact two log scales, so two decades. Number one, having two numbers given to find a third in continual proportion, a fourth and a fifth, and so forward. Extend the compasses from 2 to 4, then may you turn them from 4 to 8 and from 8 to 16, from 16 to 32, and 32 to 64, and 64 to 128. What you're basically doing is multiplying each number by 2. So there we set up with the compasses the distance 2 to 4. We maintain that distance and then we can extend the compasses from 4 to 8, thus. So 4 times 2 is 8. Eight times two, sixteen. And now here we are doing it on the actual rule in real time, measuring off two to four. Turn the compasses, as instructed, takes us to 8, again into the second decade of the scale, 16, 32, and 64 which takes us to the end of the rule. So the next instruction, if one foot of the compass is being set to 64 and then fall out of the line, in other words, you've reached the end, you may set it to another 64 nearer the beginning of the line and therefore the other foot will reach to 128, 256. So let's do what they say there. Take that back to the first decade and pick out 64, in other words, Pick out 64 at the beginning of 
the rule and now we can carry on to 128 roll them again to get to 256 and again even to get to 5 12, 512. Now, this next section I did find rather confusing, I must admit. The second part made sense to me from the beginning. If the first two numbers were 1 and 9, the third would be 81, and the fourth 729. Well, that's that makes sense because you're just taking the distance 1 to 9, adding the distance, which means you're multiplying 9 by 9 to give 81, and multiplying again to get 729, as you've just, you've just seen above with uh, multiplying by 2. But that first part, extending the number back from, t sorry, extend the compasses from 10 back to 9, and then turn them from 9 under 8.1, I couldn't get my head around that at all. Uh, it only made sense to me when I looked at a normal slide rule. So looking at a normal slide rule, looking at the C and the D scale, as you know, if you add two numbers, two distances together, you're actually multiplying them because they are logs. So I take on the C scale, put the one above the two here. So I've taken the distance two, and then I add this distance two, which is actually to multiply them, I get four, fantastic. And then the scales are now set to read off any other multiplication I want to do. So 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 4 is 8, and so on. Straightforward. Conversely, 8 divided by 4 is 2. And if I then want to multiply up, it's all there for me to read off. So going over to this side again, let's set it up over here. So we're not able on the Gunter's rule, of course, to take two scales because there's only one, but you can take the distance. And a slide rule is very clever because you actually physically take an identical scale above it and add it or subtract it. But on the Gunter's rule, you measure it with your compasses. So we're going to take that distance there, which is the distance from 1 to 9. Uh, and so that this now becomes 9 divided by 10, which is 0.9. So now we've set this, in effect, we've set by measuring that distance on the compasses, we've now set the scale so we can read off anywhere along uh, at 0.9 of the value. So if we come across to here, 0.9 of 9 is 8.1. 0.9 of 8.1 is 7.29. So that's what we're doing on the Gunter's rule. So going back to the rule, we set the compasses, the distance between 1 and 9, which means we're dividing 9 by 10 in this case. Take that distance down, so now we've got 0 0.9 times 9. 0 0.9 times 9 is 8.1. Then take the compasses across again, we've got 8.1, 8.1 times 0 0.9 is 7.29. It's not extremely clear on the rule, which may be my use of the compasses, or more likely some inaccuracy in the rule. And as mentioned before, there does seem to be some inaccuracy in these. They're not, uh, not anywhere near as accurate as you'd hope. OK, the next part is finding the roots of numbers. The square root is always the mean proportional between 1 and the number given and the something something 
found by dividing the space between them into two equal parts. So the root of 9 is 3 and the root of 81 is 9. So that makes perfect sense that uh, in the same way that uh, 3 times 3 makes 9, you just take the distance 3 and add the distance 3 and that gives you 9. Uh, in the same way, if you split the distance 9 into two equal parts, you get the square root. So dividing it by 2, because it's a log scale, gives you the square root. So as it says there, the root of 81 is 9, and so on. I don't really understand this next section. If you suppose pricks under the numbers given, as in arithmetical extraction, and the last prick to the left hand falls under the last figure... No, I don't really understand that. But... OK, part four. Having two extreme numbers given to find two mean proportionals between them. Divide the space between the two extreme numbers given into three equal parts. And the extreme numbers given were 8 and 27. Divide the space between them into three equal parts. The feet of the compass will stand in 12 and 18. Fine. So this is a way to find this, the cubic root. The cubic root is always the first of two mean proportionals between 1 and the numbers given and therefore to be found by dividing the space between them into three equal parts. So the root of, of 1728 will be found to be 12. The root of 17280 is almost 26. The root of 127,800 is almost 56. Uh, this next section doesn't really make sense to me, but I thought what we'd do now is have a look at that um, method using the Gunter's rule. So here we go. So I'm measuring off with the very large compasses 81 on the numbers line, which is the log line, almost the complete length of the rule, which is 24 inches. measure off 81. Now we need to divide that into whatever the root we're going to use and we're going to go for the fourth root so we need to divide that distance into four and that can be done of course using Gunter's rule. Um, Gunter himself doesn't mention how to do this and sometimes it'll be very straightforward of course but sometimes not straightforward at all so we'll do it the proper way here or the only way I could work out how to do it we need a linear scale to divide the number and on the back we have a 24 inch rule, normal rule with 10 inch, I'm sorry, divisions into tenths of an inch. So we can just measure that across and it gives us 216 you can see there. So 216 tenths of an inch. And now we need to divide that number by 4, which is easy to do if we go back to our numbers line on the other side. So I'm now measuring off 4. And we're going to subtract that distance from 216, thereby dividing 216 by 4. So you should be able to see with the right foot there. Divided by 4 gives us the number 54. So we take the 54 back onto our linear scale, the inch scale, set up that distance 54 which is now a quarter of the original distance we set and by measuring that from the left side that will give us the fourth root of 81 which is Three. Fantastic. 
So, we've proved the Gunter's rule works. After hundreds of years, it still works. They made things to last. And the maths still works. So that proves that they made things to last as well. So part three, we'll move on to some more complicated things and maybe even look at a couple of the other scales. Thank you for sticking with me. Bye for now.